Now looking in the muscles that move the arm, think about muscles that move the humerus. We're going to start with the pectoralis major. This muscle, this large superficial muscle, is the pectoralis major. Now we we'll go through origin, insertion, action, and innervation for this one. The origin of the pectoralis major is quite broad. It originates from the sternal end of the clavicle, it originates from the sternum, as well as originating from the first six ribs. Now all of this broad origin is going to head into the shoulder and insert into the intertubercular sulcus as well as the greater tubercle of the humerus. By doing that, we allow the action of adducting, so adducting, and medially rotating the arm. So it can adduct and medially rotate the arm. The innervation, the nerve supply, we're looking at the lateral and medial pectoral nerves. So this is our pectoralis major. Now moving to the posterior side, if we spin this around, we're going to see the latissimus dorsi. The latissimus dorsi is going to be this muscle down lower. The origin, insertion, action, and innervation again. The origin of latissimus dorsi has a kind of an indirect attachment through the lumbodorsal fascia, so down here. It's going to come off of the lower six thoracic ribs. It's going to come off of the lower six thoracic vertebrae, as well as the lumbar vertebrae. It also has some of the origins coming from the iliac crest. Now all that will come up into the shoulder and it's going to insert right at the floor, the bottom, of the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus. The action then, remember, insertion is pulled towards origin. It's going to be arm extension but it also helps with arm adduction, A-D-duction. The innervation, thoracodorsal nerve, thoracodorsal nerve. Now to stay with the muscles that move the humerus, we'll come out here onto the shoulder. So we're going to spend just a little more here. Now this view is showing the deltoid right here. This is the deltoid. You'll notice how the deltoid will go down and dive deep down into the humerus there. So I'm going to spin this around and look at a little different view of the deltoid. But here we also have the deltoid. And what you can notice is the deltoid is going to have origins right here. So you have origins coming off of the lateral third of the clavicle. It's going to have origins coming off of the acromion, this point right here, as well as on the posterior side has origins coming off of the scapular spine. But we also have a little bit of the origins kind of working together with the trapezius muscle. So we keep spinning this around. Well, notice here's trapezius coming down. The origin of the deltoid comes right in the same spot, so it kind of embraces it, helps work with it. But the insertion now, where it dives down deep in the arm, it go down deep right at this point. That insertion is going to be the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. The action, arm ab. Duction, so abduction, arm abduction. And the innervation is the axillary nerve. So innervation is the axillary nerve. Now, some other muscles that are going to move the humerus 
are going to be parts of the rotator cuff. Now for that, I'm going to switch models to get a little, better, a little different view here. Now with changing views here, what I've done is pulled out a larger arm, so it's a little easier to see the detail of the muscles. What you're noticing is we're going to focus up here. This muscle right here, which is going to be on the anterior side of the scapula, that is going to be your subscapularis. Now the subscapularis is going to have a main action of medial rotator of the arm, but it can also help with stabilizing the shoulder joint. So now we're going through the four muscles that are part of the rotator cuff right now. So the subscapularis, anterior side of the arm, and we're looking at the main action of medial rotation of the arm, but it also helps with stabilizing the shoulder. Now the other three are going to be on the posterior side. Now that we've zoomed in a little bit closer into the shoulder area, it's a little easier to see this muscle right here. This muscle is going to be the supraspinatus. It's found deep below the trapezius muscle. The supraspinatus muscle is going to start abduction, so abduction of the arm, but it also stabilizes shoulder joints. If we move down, so here's the scapular spine, below or inferior to the scapular spine, this is going to be infraspinatus. Now, infraspinatus is going to rotate the arm laterally, but also it's going to stabilize the shoulder joints. Go a little more inferior, this muscle right here is going to be your teres minor. Now, teres minor has the same action as infraspinatus. It's going to rotate the arm laterally, as well as stabilize the shoulder joint. Now, if we leave the rotator cuff behind, we move down to the teres major. That's this muscle right here. The teres major muscle is going to have an action of extending as well as medially rotating and adducting, so adducting the arm. So teres major can extend the arm, can medially rotate the arm, and it can adduct the arm. And the last muscle in this group we're going to cover, the ones that move the humerus, we're going to have to work on taking this model and looking more toward the medial side, so the inside. So we can take this, and if we can rotate it around, we're now on the inside of the arm, so again, orientation-wise, this muscle is going to be your subscapularis. We're looking at this part right here. This muscle right here is going to be your coracobrachialis. The coracobrachialis. Now, the coracobrachialis is going to have an action of flexing and adducting, adducting the arm. So coracobrachialis, this little piece right here. This one right here for reference is going to be your biceps brachii. So it's just this little bit, the coracobrachialis.